Good evening everybody and welcome to this meeting of the Railway Division Northeast, Northeastern Centre of the IMAC E. My name is Louise Shaw uh, and I'm the Chair. And apologies first of all for our little delay. Uh, we had our speaker lost connectivity so we had to try and re-establish that and it took a few moments. We've got a large audience with us this evening which is fantastic uh, because we've got a very pertinent topic to be discussing which is uh, the upcycling of some former London Underground D-stock trains into modern battery and diesel electric and other traction power class 230s. I hope everybody's comfortable using WorkCast I'm aware that it's maybe a novelty for some people, so we have some technical support from Emma Pakeman at the institution. If you're having problems, please do drop a question into the questions box and Emma will do her best to deal with them. Um, there is a backup if your internet connection is unreliable, um, which she'll be able to help you with. So we've got um, some parish notices to go through. Um, which should take you through to upcoming events. I've done my best to list as many railway division events over the next couple of months as possible. Uh, and also I'm aware that there are lots of other events being run by other railway institutions, so the PWI, IRSE and IET. Many, many of them are free at the moment. You just have to find them and register appropriately with them uh, to do so. So there's an opportunity if you wish to improve your uh, knowledge of railways, what's current, historic and just plain interesting, then please feel free to do so. All of the railway division programmes are loaded onto the IMECI's Near You uh, platform and they're being kept up to date by the various railway division centres. But there are no geographical descriptions. You're free to go to and welcome to go to any of them. If you'd like to join our mailing list, um, there's a contact us type function on the Northeastern Near You page as well, which comes through directly to the committee. I'd like to draw your attention in particular to uh, our next session in on the 11th of February, which is the Young Members Competition um, and always hear about some interesting things there from uh, young engineers who are usually doing stuff at the cutting edge rather than us old fuddy duddies who are trying to make it all work. Okay. Um, the other event I'd like to draw your attention to is the virtual annual luncheon on the 5th of March. Normally this will be a fantastic um, event down in London. Obviously we can't do that this year. But instead, we are uh, intending to run a virtual annual luncheon in a similar sort of fashion. People can host tables, people can join individually if they like, uh, with the difference this year that the, the price is considerably less than it would normally be if we were at the Grosvenor, uh, and the proceeds are going to charity. We've got two speakers. Uh, Felix Schmidt, Chairman of the Division, whom I'm sure many of you will know, and Caroline Sheridan, who is the Director of Engineering Delivery at Transport for London. So uh, two excellent speakers. I'm sure both of them will have some interesting things to say. Uh, if you would like to book a table, and as I say, I would strongly encourage it, um, the details are on the institution's events page, or if you drop me a line through, through near you, uh, I'll direct you to the right page. Um, but it would be great if we could have as, as good a virtual luncheon uh, as we normally would enjoy uh, by being at the Grosvenor. There are various ways that you can keep up with uh, what's going on. Uh, I've listed them all here. The easiest one if you want to start off is just to go to our Near You page. So type in IMECE Near You and you'll get uh, directed there by the usual search engines and you can burrow your way into the system to find Northeastern um, and Railway. There are also lots of others on there. We have a LinkedIn account. 
uh, as well. You can subscribe to that if you wish. Or you can join our mailing list by dropping us a line. So no excuses for not knowing what's going on. This evening, um, we will do Q&A at the end of the presentation and we'll compile the questions as they come in and try and group them so we can make sure that everybody's question gets answered in the easiest fashion by our speaker this evening. Um, if you've used some kind of pseudonym, it would really help me uh, if you could uh, use your proper name in the question to let me know who it is and that will give me a much better idea of why you might have asked that question. So um, without further ado, I shall move on to introducing our speaker. So tonight we're very, very fortunate to have a very busy guy join us, Steve Rowell. Steve started his career as a mechanical rolling stock apprentice in 1992 on the Tyne and Weir Metro. Since then, he's moved through a variety of roles as a fitter in technical support, in quality management, and maintenance leadership with Time and Wheel Metro, subsequently with East Coast, Arriva Buses, running his own management engineering consultancy, and also with VivaRail. It would be fair to say Steve's breadth of experience reflects the roller coaster of railway businesses since the early 1990s. Um, where he's had roles including director, senior responsibility for delivering and leading businesses, engineering, rolling stock, depot bids, production, maintenance, and quality-based objectives. His role with Beaver Rail seems him delivering product support for Class 230 and subsequent maintenance operations in fleet deployment for the different Class 230 variants. Steve has got phenomenal knowledge uh, of these trains uh, and the, the, the cradle to grave of, of the 230, not that they're getting near the grave just yet. Um, he's also a lovely guy and very open and exceedingly um, generous with his time. So please use it well. Please put in your questions uh, in the question box and we'll do our best to, to address them. Um, and. If there's anything that we don't get to, to ask, uh, and if you'd like to, to drop me an email, we'll see what we can do to get it answered. So without further ado, I'll ask Steve to take up the, the mantle of presenting, and we'll look forward to, to what he's got to say. Thank you, Louise, and um, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for the opportunity to present. Um, I do hope that you find the presentation informative. Um, and certainly over the next 30 to 40 minutes, um, I would like to specifically take you through um, the journey of Viva Rail in our last five years. Uh, and, and this is centered around the extent of development, the class 230, the class 484, um, and the, the, the innovation which we have brought and solutions which are available now for both urban and rural lines. Uh, and, 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 and really how we develop this from the progression from the D78 to our variants. Um, Louise, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, um, I, and again, I can just see a number of colleagues just flashing up um, um, on the system. I'm very, thank uh, very thankful for the opportunity. Um, as you may well, may well tell from the presentation, I'm a very excitable and passionate um, Jody, give my accent, uh, and I am still learning and growing. Uh, I've nearly 30 years of experience as an engineer, uh, and to have been involved from the start um, in late 2014 to date on engineering with Viva Rail that covers, uh, as Louise has touched on, cradle to grave, uh, has been a unique opportunity. Uh, and this has involved literally from start, design, build, delivery, certification, maintenance, and working through. Um, alongside some um, exceptional and experienced um, team working players within the industry uh, and uh, th throughout the deliverables. So I, I, I shall do my best at the end of it to answer as many questions as I can. As Louise has touched on, I, I will come back to those um, um, as soon as I get an opportunity for those which I don't get around to answer or indeed I can't answer. Um, but uh, however, back to the presentation as such, 
Viva Real, um, who are we? Um, Viva Real, and we, we, we have been around um, um, and, and started in 2014. Um, we took um, a, a decision at that point in time to uh, procure from London Underground um, some um, um, rolling stock which was uh, being um, re removed from service by London Underground um, purely because of uh, innovation and standardisation of their stock. Um, we bought 226 carriages, um, uh, of which 156 of those were power cars and 70 uh, were, were, were trailer cars. Um, these units are aluminium bodied. And, and, and this is part of the reasons for the decision by Viva Rail and up to the direction via um, um, our senior team, including Adrian, to, um, uh, to, to, to develop the Class 230s. Um, so let me just go on to the slides and see if my system is working. Okay. So the 230. As you can see from the image there, this, this is a brand new train. It's a brand new concept, and, and, and originally was, was was commenced around um, um, the, the D78. From a historical point of view, the D78 has been in operation with London Underground since um, 1976 from a design perspective. Um, operated on the district line um, in between. Uh, and delivered between 78 and 81, and then served and uh, continued in service literally until 2015, 2016, when, when, when the units were eventually removed from service and, and, and replaced with new. These are a single leaf door unit with rubber chevron suspension. Um, um, the cab was very, very typical of a um, um, metro style rapid trans tra 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 transit system. Cab um, um, and, and um, it, it had it, it, its own bespoke train management system as well. Um, as, uh, again, as a part of the um, a part of this rolling stock, um, uh, the, the fact that the the, the bogies had literally just been rebogied in between 2002 2006 was quite key. Um, um, the, the, the the original. Uh, bogies which were fitted to the district uh, d district line in the D78s um, um, and track conditions meant that uh, there was a lot of fatigue. Uh, subsequently, the entire bogies were, were, were completely renewed and, and this is a flexible bogie for it, designed and built by our trans uh, and obviously transferred across to Bombardia and is ideal clearly for the um, LUL um, um, track and then from a network rail point of view, the, uh, the the flexible frame lends itself very very well. So so from a bogey element and from the fact that we've got an aluminium shell, um, um, you know the, 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 these units have got a lot of life left in them yet. And and part of the first strategy was to um, take the unit, understand what what needed to be done to it, um, uh, and then progress into what what would then become the 230. So, from a 230 point of view, I've, I've, I've done my best to pull up some some, some specific slides and images there. Um, these trains, and, un, unless you've been on them, have a huge amount of space on the inside. So, not only is uh, uh, not only are they corrosion free, but on the underside of this, um, um, uh, they are aluminium sole bar. Um, um, the headstocks are steel. Um, uh, again, there is a huge amount of space on the underside also. For the original concept uh, and 230001, which was our prototype train, we we, we actually took receipt of this um, early January 2015, and and, and by the mid summer of 2016, we, we we had a two car unit, which was then being developed into a three car unit. The two car unit is very important because the the, the, the 230 in itself um, um, is is a building block for a number of other units which can be built from the 230. By that, uh, what I mean is that the concept has always been there from uh, from, from within Viva Rail and Adrian that, that we have uh, the ability to offer a DEMU. We have always had the ability then to transfer that to make that a battery unit. We have then had the ability to then transfer that to a hybrid unit um, and, and, and then furthermore to add on 25kV. So, so, so the options for this unit is not just about um, a, a single piece of rolling stock which has got diesel uh, engines fitted to it. This 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 has a unit life of, of 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 30 years, which can be migrated to whatever the customer wants and customer needs, very rapidly and very quickly. From a 230001 point of view, which is what we call it, 
the power cars, um, um, we undertook a lot of testing with that. We, we, we substantially rebuilt the, 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 the front of the units and undertaken crash tests. Um, we completely um, um, refurbished the bogies. We added on obstacle deflectors. Um, we added on TPWS, GSMR. We, we, we added all the standard kit, and all of that was deliberate from a point of view to make these units completely um, familiar with, with our colleagues and uh, in, in, in operations within within the industry um, so that anybody on a main line would recognize it, could get into it, and with a, with, with, with a degree of training, could, could be very familiar with it. There was also a unique feature in it as well in that we were all of a sudden converting it to diesel, certainly for the first unit, and, 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 and within this, um, um, we developed and we were given a challenging concept to be able to come up with a generator pack um, which contained um, a Ford 3.2 litre Puma engine, which is 200 brake horsepower. Um, and and um, I, I will touch on, on, on what then become the gen set very shortly. Again, as a part of this um, upgrade, we took a trailer unit, again as a demonstrator, just to prove what could be done with this. And, and certainly the top left hand image of the, um, of, of, of the slide shows the, the, the strip out of 23001. Within that, we then put a, an, an array of different um, um, seating, which, which, which really explores and expands on um, um, the, the, the sheer um, either seating space or standing space that, that is required to be customized for the, for the, for the customer. Um, and we fitted a standard toilet module, um, PIS, CCTV, Wi-Fi, all of the, all of the bog standard kit which we take for granted every time we get on some modern rolling stock, it, it, it was installed. Again, from a maintenance point of view, this was utilizing the existing D78 shell, D78 system, um, but fully rewired uh, and, and, and fully reworked. The bottom right image um, um, of that slide shows what the, uh, the demonstrator ended up looking at. Uh, this included uh, a degree of airline seating in there, as you can see from a transverse seating point of view. That longitudinal seating was removed. Um, it still showed some of the D78 seating. Um, but as, as, as I generate through the slide, you, 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 you will see what the 230 started from and has now become uh, as a standard invariant. Now, I, I briefly touched on the word genset there before. The, the, the genset is our power pack, and, and this is the main power pack, certainly for the, for the diesel units, but also for the hybrid units. Um, um, this is a um, certainly a clever piece of kit. Um, uh, it, it is entirely boxed, and, and there are two gen sets per power car, each given out anywhere between um, 100, 100 kilowatts and 130 kilowatts each. Um, within this gen set, we, we have completely repackaged um, um, a Ford 3.2 litre Puma engine. It's got its own generator in there, it's got its own inverter in there, and effectively the, the, the genset is putting out 750 volts DC. We applied two of, the, the, two of these units to the um, 230, um, and e e each, each genset effectively powering a bogey. Um, and, and bogeys I will touch on in a second as well because that, that, that is quite key. The genset itself no different to anything which um, um, uh, any new piece of innovation um, um, doesn't stand still. As, as a concept, we started with a Mark 1. Um, we, we then were able to generate a Mark 2. And then as a business, again, we've been able to um, um, incrementally improve on that again to a Mark 3. Throughout, our ethos is, 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 is like most people's ethos in terms of getting a product which is maintenance, maintenance friendly, works. Um, 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 uh, 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 and clearly, from a point of view of, of, of workability, can can be changed when required. Our leader, in terms of um, 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 Mr. Shooter, did set us a challenging target for this, uh, uh, and and you may have heard this within the industry before. Uh, we were set a challenging target t t target to be able to change one of these units in 10 minutes. Um, the genset was designed specifically to be quick release. Um, it has got exhaust adaptions on it. It has got quick release sources for fuel. It has got um, secondary retention blocks and tethers, etc. And um, the, the challenge was laid, laid down. And um, 10 minutes can be achieved uh, and is achievable both with a forklift, um, uh, with, 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 with fine tuning, which is what we tend to use at Bletchley. And the best time we've ever gotten this down to is four minutes. And, 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 and that is typically a pit stop change with a genset in and, and, and a new genset. 
um, and removed. So the gen set in itself is 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 uh, a really substantial and clever piece of uh, equipment. Um, it has got a Naira ECU controller uh, within there. Um, uh, as I've touched on, it does produce 130 kilowatts, anywhere between 100 and, 100 and 130 kilowatts of mechanical output and 115 kilowatts of electrical output. Um, and, and its unique selling point is for the fact that it can be changed at within 10 minutes. The gen set in itself is also quite key in the fact that um, and this kinematic envelope has then been able to be utilised not just for, not just for gen sets but therefore for batteries uh, and is also potentially usable for hydrogen as well. Okay, and again batteries I will touch on in a second. The traction system. Um, I, I've just put that image up there, and, and I've no doubt the sli slides will be made available um, afterwards. Um, the, 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 the traction system then focused um, um, initially on DC motors, uh, and, and it was the original London Underground LT118 DC motors which we were utilising. Um, the traction system is quite key because, again, from a maintenance perspective, and anybody who's worked with DC motors, the, the, the challenge that you have with them. Um, it, it is one is typically flash overs. Two is is they are very maintenance and, and, and labour intensive from a point of view of um, um, constraints and examinations. So our, our, our original LT118 DC motors, which were fully overhauled uh, and, uh, um, and reworked by Brush, um, worked worked fantastically. But a, a distinct decision was was taken to to, to, to alter the entire system to ESC traction motors. Now, this was brilliant from my point of view, um, um, from a, a maintenance angle, because going through and designing all of the maintenance cycles, it therefore meant we could automatically and sensibly lift the e exam maintenance cycle considerably to, to, to cater for the fact that you weren't having to check every single motor, every single brush box, um, uh, and so forth. Uh, in, instead, what was replaced with was a modern AC traction motor. Um, um, very maintenance friendly and very user friendly, and, 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 and this is where we then started to configure the class 230 and 001 to then look at the next generation, which therefore moved away from DC to AC, which was quite key. So, from the point of view of the, the, the demonstrator 23001, just as a recap of it, we ended up by the end of 2016 um, having a two-car unit, which had been um, um, was under under test, had been completed, was certified. Um, within 2017, the three-car unit um, um, in itself was authorised by OR for, um, for, for for passenger use. And uh, as a three-car unit, what we're looking at. Um, uh, again, just to recap, there's standard GSMR, standard TPWS Mark 4, CCTV, OTDR, um, uh, a standard Pascom PIS kit that's fitted in there, and all LED light with brand new door controls, um, fully refurbished bogies, brand new door USP fitted as well, um, track circuit assistors, standing systems adders, um, a brand new cab which, 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 which tied in with, with, with a full width cab. Um, which, which, which made this train uh, and makes this train attractive from a mainline perspective. A brand new traction control unit um, who, who, who we have partnered and worked, worked through with the Structum. Um, we, we, we are, we've added fuel tank and gen sets and uh, one of the key features for me is we, we, we retained the original Westwood braking system. Um, and, 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 and that is key from a point of view. It's, it's a system that works. It works on a, on a rapid system. Um, the, the maximum speed of these units is, is 60 mile an hour, and um, as a result of that, it, 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 they continue to still allow us to meet um, um, standards, good standards. Our next focus then turned on to gensets and batteries, as, I, as I've just before mentioned there. The next unit, which then become 23002, um, we, we, we started to explore battery technology um, um, late 2016 and, and very quickly within early 2017, mid 2017, we had developed um, um, a prototype, prototype unit. This prototype unit, and, and, and there is a YouTube link, which I can't show on the, um, uh, on the presentation, but Emma will make available for those who, 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 who missed the BBC programme um, um, last year. Um, those demonstrate the original concept um, in and around Long Marston being utilised. 
and um, this is uh, a venture which Beaver Rail have undertaken, and we, we have created the battery pack. Um, now, this battery pack is is, is very specific um, um, to the 230s. Uh, again, it is utilising the kinematic envelope of the genset. It is utilising exactly the same retention system. Um, so, so what we then have is we, we, we then have a unit which, if you remove gensets, uh, exhausts, fuel tank, um, um, can, can, can very, very relatively quickly be converted into a battery train, and uh, a two-car battery train, given given um, a strong range of anywhere between uh, 60 up to 80 miles, and then um, uh, with a third battery on there, can quite comfortably take us up to 100 miles between charges. Again, this is utilising. The SE traction motors, which again has been key, we partnered a company called TSA, which is uh, in Austria. Um, they, they are very familiar in the UK. Um, we have motors which are connected in series and again mounted in, 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 on, on each motor bogey, one per axle, uh, and, and that is, in itself is quite key because that gives us four traction motors on each power car, um, with the motors being robust and, and, and simple ESE parallel machines. Very little maintenance intervention other, other than cleaning air filters. And, um, and increasing bear, bearings on a life cycle. The two car unit, 002, uh, w w w w was a power car and a power car. Um, this, as, as I touched on there, was initially a DAMU. Uh, we, we, we then developed a change package um, to, to create it as a BAMU. Um, and, and the battery you can see in the, in the, in the bottom right hand corner and, and, and the similarities between that and the gen sets are, are, are effectively the shell. Um, but within this um, battery unit, um, um, we, we, we have developed um, 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 with, with uh, obviously the um, company who we work with, which is Lithium Works, um, a, a battery unit which is um, now after two years um, is it, it, yielding dividends from a point of view of reliability and performance and and um, the, the, really the ability to, to, to continue driving the trains to where we need it to. Again, these units are portable so we can transfer them between depots uh, for, 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 for just, to, just awareness really for the audience. A genset weighs approximately 895 kilograms I say that because give or take um, 50 kilograms or so. Um, uh, the battery bank weighs approximately 1.3, 1.4 ton. Okay, so with each different variant, we do go through and naturally have gone through um, dynamics. We, 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 we go through um, um, revised braking, we go through gauging. So everything um, from a normal build as to what you would expect for a new train, we have gone through. And uh, the, the, the trains that are built are completely certified um, to standards and TSIs. The battery train itself, um, we, we, we were quite fortunate to be able to get first um, real passenger trial back in uh, October 2018. So uh, fr from a challenge point of view, it, we started this in 2017. We had a fully completed train in 2018, and and, and, and that was trialled in Scotland uh, on the Bonus and Canary uh, Railway um, uh, as a two-car battery unit. And that operated there for, for, for approximately a week. Um, and I, I think at the time, I think that was the first UK um, battery um, battery trial as well, uh, and one which had been authorised to be able to to, to run on the, net, on the network. From a, from a final authorisation point of view, our battery trades were were, were finally authorised in 2020, and I'll, I will touch on this in a second because it, it, again there is a, dis, a distinct a distinct connect in between 230002 and then our hybrid trains that we then developed. Part of the next scale of the journey, as we started, um, was our first production order. So the previous trains had been prototypes uh, and demonstrators. Um, the first production orders uh, were for West Midlands trains, uh, and these were specifically to operate um, on the Bedford Bletchley line. Um, uh, the, this, this is quite a, a short branch line. Um, these units were built um, at our Long Master site in between 2017 and 2018. To our standard baseline, uh, and then the inside was tailored to a, um, a specific customer specification of seating and layout. Um, these are a two-car unit, um, so there, there are three two-car units at Bletchley TMD, um, and they first ended service back in March 2019. Um, as a unit, let me just, just go on to the next slide because uh, this will give you an insight. 
Uh, again, the, the, the units were completely stripped out. It was com complete brand new transverse seating put into there, um, fully PRM compliant um, and toilet module. Um, again, refurbished bogies uh, and um, uh, uh, at the time, something which was quite unique for this country, we also introduced a UIC gangway, which is the tubular gangway, um, um, which, which, which is a flexible unit separating the, uh, the, 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 the two carriages. Um, we occupied Bletchley um, in around about August 2018 and continued to do so um, as the ECM for these specific units and um, we, 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 we continue to operate on the line now. Key, key feature with 230.03.05, which is what these units are, they are a DEMU, so, so they are diesel, and then um, the, the next progression as we've come into is then we have then looked at specifically for the industry and, and developing a hybrid unit. Again, the hybrid units um, um, are, are, are a hybrid of our diesel technology and battery technology. Um, the power cars are very different in that previously the gensets were on the uh, power cars. Uh, on, on this occasion, the uh, hybrids, the batteries are on the power cars. And then we've introduced, um, um, certainly uh, as a demonstrator, we've built a, a prototype trailer unit which, which, which um, houses four gensets each genset in its own right, charging up um, um, a battery on the power car um, and, and, and the traction supply actually taken from the battery. So literally the genset is topping up the battery, but the battery is providing um, very clean, very specific um, 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 DC voltage. On 230.02, we, 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 we introduced um, um, within 2018 and 2019, uh, two, two, the, the, the two power cars with the trailer and we generated effectively our first hybrid units as a mix of battery and gen sets. Um, the, 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 the batteries, as you can see there, it's a lithium ion um, and technology. Um, they are 540 volts with charged. Um, the, the, the battery itself is, again, is a very clever piece of kit with a, a battery management system. It's got diagnostic software. Um, and as I've touched on already, uh, from a range perspective, we get anywhere between 60 up to 100 miles, depending on the rolling stock configuration, whether it's two car, whether it's three car, uh, whether it's hybrid, etc. cetera. And um, um, so from a range perspective, um, uh, the, 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 the units has grown substantially. Maintenance wise, these are very maintenance friendly, especially on the battery side. We, we, we do balance the batteries um, um, weekly, which is uh, effectively a, uh, an overnight charge with e either a 240 volt supply or a 415 three phase supply. Uh, and, and that just ensures that the batteries are kept in top condition. In addition to that, all of the trains have been fitted with remote condition monitoring. And, and from an RCM uh, perspective, all values, whether it's genset, whether it's batteries, and whether it's the other diagnost diagnostics on the train, are then able to be monitored on a daily basis by uh, by, by, by my team and the, uh, and the devils. So any any specific issue of a battery potentially dropping down is picked up quite quickly. In addition to this, we we we, we then introduced uh, or, or, or improved upon the um, um, suppression systems within there. So again, what the, the, these units have got um, full prim primary and secondary fire suppression systems. Um, 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 and, and then on the hybrid units, which I'll come on to, um, on the interiors where we've gone for a wide wave gangway, uh, that, that there's full interior smoke detection as well. Um, what I've touched on there, you see, is, is, is at this stage we then developed a Mark II genset, and, and, and this Mark II genset was, was, was again the next evolution um, to, 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 to the original genset. And again, what this has been about is continuing to utilize the, the um, Ford 3.2 liter Puma engine, um, um, but making sure that we've got um, sufficient contingency and supply in the industry with generators. Uh, and, and, and what we've been able to do with this is, is get to the point whereby we, we, we've got an available availability of three different generators, uh, which, which can then go into the gen set. From a, from a maintenance perspective, again, the idea being is a genset is simply removed um, um, and a spare one refitted. The one which has come off can be taken into the workshop um, and uh, another change applied to it. Um, and fuel, fuel filters looked at, air filters looked at, that type of thing. Uh, and again, the angle where we've come from, from an engineering team, is to try to keep this as simple as possible 
um, and, and in terms of at times where simplicity isn't isn't available to be able to do a quick switch out to then be able to work in the workshop to maximise rolling stock availability in downtime. The following slide shows the um, um, prototype unit. Um, the, the, the mixed colours are, are, are purely down to the fact that we've had um, um, the, the original um, um, 230 0 power cars, which were, which have got the batteries on. The, the, the middle unit with the red doors is is, is, is the mule, a prototype um, um, trailer car, which has got the gensets fitted. Uh, and all of this was set up just to just to be able to derive characteristics, derive performance for the traction control unit drive battery values and, and to, to, to drive RPM for the gensets. And in all of this side of it, largely has been about the traction element. The interior you will see in a second in terms of what, what, what has been achievable um, uh, against the customer specification. And again, importantly about this is it comes back to the fact that the, the 230 life cycle and lifespan and it allows anybody to have diesel if they wanted to, it allows them to have battery if they want to, it allows you to have a hybrid, um, indeed, allows you to have hydrogen or 25 kV or, or, or third rail. Okay, so, so, so the options for these units um, um, are, really are endless and, and apply to anything. Our next production order uh, is a result of the extensive work which, we, which we'd undertaken on hybrid uh, and hybridisation with wheels and borders. Um, this, this specific order um, started in 2018 um, and uh, is, is, is nearly concluded with the delivery of the 5.3 car units. Um, um, we, we, this order specifically is for 5.3 car units with units based at Birkenhead. And um, this is, as a train, a completely new train when you look at it on the inside. This is wide weight gangways. Um, this is full um, air conditioning. This is fully double glazed. Um, this, this is utilising the same um, uh, cab equipment and, and, and again standard kit throughout um, batteries. There are our lithium, uh, lithium ion batteries that's been fitted. We've got Mark II gen sets fitted to there. And um, again, these units are now up and running alongside the, the, the Rex and Blitz 94 um, TFW and uh, driver training. We've got one unit which is still being con con concluded at Long Marston, which is 230.0010, which is due for delivery. Um, and again, I think if you, if you look at the, um, the the following images, you know certainly the interior of the train is is is, is being completely transformed, and it just shows what a blank canvas a customer can have from this. Again, everything that you're looking at there, from um, um, from draft screens to seat and layouts um, to um, aircon to double glares and to brand new door controls, all of that again has been through. Um, with, with the size of the team that we have approvals um, um, uh, to, to, to give a product which is no different to any other product which 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 which, which hits the industry, and again, as I say, importantly, using common themed um, 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 equipment which, which which provides the longevity. These particular units on the top left hand side, these have um, um, had a moulding applied to the front end. Um, uh, as I've touched on before, it's all brand new PIS, brand new horns. Um, and, and the, the, the wedge lock water couples have been fully overhauled. Um, from an interior point of view, these have been maximised for seating as well as the standing areas, and, and we pay a huge amount of attention in terms of uh, what standing areas are required specific to the network that we're going on, and whether that's standing areas, whether it's bikes, uh, whether it's luggage, et cetera, and we're, we're exceptionally flexible in terms of the product which we need to put out and, get, and can do so very rapidly as well with, 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 with the innovation that we've got, with the size of the team that we've got and the expertise that we've got coming in. These units, as I've touched on, was a wide rear gangway put on. The bottom right-hand corner shows it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a standard hood and gangway which has been fitted into there to give the environment um, um, that, 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 that was required for this three-car unit. From an acceleration perspective, um, um, for, for, for anybody who's actually um, rode on these trains, um, they're very quiet. Um, certainly as a two-car battery unit, um, and the acceleration is, is phenomenal and, and, and therefore capped at one meters per second squared in line with the, uh, um, um, with the industry standard. Um, they, they are, um, uh, with them being so light as well, um, they are very fuel efficient. Um, from a, from a, a, a tonnage perspective, a power car can vary 
anywhere between 31 ton up to 35 ton, depending on, on, on which variant we, we are offering. The trailer car, um, again, depending on the variant, can, 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 can vary anywhere between um, 21 ton up to 29 ton. Um, so typically as a three car a three car set, you're looking at, at, at around about 100, 105 tons, certainly for the hybrid unit. Um, seating, uh, seating and, and standing capacity and, and generally just under 300. Um, um, fuel economy wise, we are getting, uh, th th there, are, there is a 1500 litre uh, fuel tank um, fitted, which is two, two 750 fuel tanks. And we get um, um, three days running, which is uh, circa um, 1300 to 1500 miles. And, and, and again, from a battery range, um, anywhere up to 80 miles as well. The battery technology itself is key because um, we again we we're able to maximise dynamic braking and, and as a result of dynamic braking we're able to recharge the batteries at the same time. Um, so so from from from, from that perspective, uh, it's a win-win situation. Uh, and again, no different than any other train with, with with dynamic and real braking, and we maximise brake block life as well. The West Midlands units, um, there is no regen on those. Um, 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 there is dynamic braking, which 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 again. Uh, pre pre preserve brake bot life um, uh, with, the, with the remaining energy dissipated into brake resistors. So, so far as a company, we, we've only been around four years, but within that time, um, there, there has been two types of train built, delivered, productionized, uh, and 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 um, um, made viable with, 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 with and certified with URR. There's been three different variants of trains, which have been also prototyped and demonstrated as well to get us where we need to be. This then feeds us on to the next element in terms of where we're running alongside now, which is the Class 484. The Class 484 piggybacks onto the 230 and clearly uses the same shell, uses the same cab, um, bogies, um, 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 obstacle deflector. Uh, um, um, the, the only differences with this unit is it's a return to third wheel. Um, D78 originally had third wheel. Uh, and, and, and show gear on, and, 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 and in this situation, it's, it's been a very, very simple case of us um, um, refurbishing that, overhauling that equipment, and, and designing that into the works. We have got a, a brand new tra traction control unit on, on this one. We've all, we're also had to, have to introduce an axle earth return unit, which is the middle image, and, and these units um, are, are being built for Southwestern Railways, for, specifically for the Isle of Wight. Um, for colleagues and for those who are on LinkedIn, it's been nice to see so many uh, images and uh, videos presented quite recently. And uh, I was quite fortunate to accompany the first unit across to the island um, in November uh, when it was delivered, um, and, 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 and some of the initial testing which we've been able to undertake there. So the images which I've applied on there, this is right depot. It shows the old stock which is which which, which is now um, 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 being decommissioned. We have our first unit there, and we're currently going through um, testing and dynamic testing, um, establishing the MC testing for it, et cetera. And again, no different to all the other variants, just, just, just proven um, and that the systems um, are, are, are compliant with uh, TSIs and NTRs um, for, for, for the industry. These units, 5-2 car units for Southwestern, these have retained the D78 interior, so, so they have specifically retained the um, um, the longitudinal seating, um, which, which had been applied, and, and, and that clearly maximises standing uh, capacity um, whilst offering the seating capacity available. Again, it just shows just how diverse the 230 stroke 484 is from a point of view of uh, really the customer can have whatever they want on the inside uh, from an interior perspective, and from a traction package, we can retraction um, whether it's um, DC, AC. Um, um, third rail, um, 25kV, etc, etc. Okay. From my angle then, so, so where else where I fit into this is uh, we have a product support division um, and, and with, with, within that, a part of that element is is we look after the trains. Um, once they've been commissioned, uh, we have a, um, a, a dedicated team um, who, who support and set up the depots, um, um, train, um, train operating staff and, 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 and maintenance staff accordingly. Uh, we, we, we develop all of the maintenance plans, and that's, that's myself in conjunction with um, um, my, my colleagues. And um, within um, within the product support, we, we, we've established a base in County Durham and same. 
Um, a beautiful little place if you haven't been. Um, um, it's right right on the uh, North Sea, uh, about 200 metres away from the North Sea, in fact, so it gets bloody cold at times, but uh, in the summer, absolutely beautiful. And uh, if Mr Brown's on, uh, he, from a fish and chip point of view, the fish and chips are, are second to none. Um, Paver Hill in itself, we, we've acquired two units here. We've got one which is 10,000 square feet, the other which is 6,000 square feet. And I've done my best to capture in terms of what it is we do. Um, um, so, so whilst we have our parent sites at Long Marston and Southam, which is the main production facilities, here we've got a prototype facility uh, where, whereby we can undertake the carriage, we can strip it out, we can do whatever it is we need to do in terms of design work, build work, uh, and, and some solid engineering. And that, that includes interiors and exteriors. Um, We've also established and set up a full bogey over overhaul facility. Um, we, we, we don't specifically do wheel sets. We, we, we work in conjunction with Bobtech with that. But from a bogey overhaul, framework, strip down, repipe work, brake actuators, um, uh, installation of um, and motors, um, third rail equipment, all of that is done here. In addition, we have set up the um, um, we have set up the units. Um, any rolling stock wiring that is required, harnesses. We do that, so, so all of the designs are generated uh, from colleagues at, at, um, um, back at base at Long Marston. So those designs are interpreted and, and we build full wiring looms. So, so anything to do with the cab equipment, low rollers, high rollers, boxes, traction supply boxes, um, through car wiring, harnesses for couplers, all of that is done in-house. And we've got a, a, a in that bottom, bottom middle image, um, if you focus on it close enough, at the top end of that picture, you can see there's a mezzanine floor in there. That mezzanine floor was put in very, very purposely for the uh, 230s and four at four stroke D78, and in, in, in that it allows us to build full length, full length wiring looms um, um, from scratch, which, which which caters for the full length of these vehicles. In addition, within the workshop, we we, we have dedicated areas where we build the batteries uh, from scratch, and again we get the frameworks in, we establish all of the batteries, we set them up, we charge them, we put the BMS in, which is the battery management system. Um, likewise, gensets, we have a full working area for not just refurbishing and building gensets, but the ongoing maintenance of gensets, which both happen, happen at active depots, but also within CM. Um, similarly, we, we, we cater for full uh, wedge lock order coupler um, and, and overhaul and repairs and cab seat repairs. All of this has been set up for, from scratch, and literally we've done all of this within the course of the past two years. Um, um, uh, this, uh, certainly as it stands uh, uh, in challenging times, we have 75 people there, in addition to uh, approximately 25 uh, within the product support team who, who look after Bletchley TMD for West Midlands, uh, who, who look after parts of Birkenhead um, um, uh, and, and the TFW units, and also our colleagues in the SWR and, and, and the Isle of Wight. So from a facility point of view, it, it, it's a type of facility where we do real engineering, we had an opportunity for everybody uh, at, at, at all levels to, 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 to get involved with um, design, manufacture, right through to test, commission, and then seeing it onto the trains where, where we then develop all of the maintenance plan, the VMIs, the VMOIs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I have to say, it's such a, a bloody exciting opportunity um, uh, in, in, in what it allows us to do as engineers. The end is also equally rewarding because we end up with three units specific designs which, which, which are out there on the network, which are available for any business if they want to buy it, which fulfills a myriad of opportunities. This then takes me into the, um, um, uh, in, into more of the, sort of the closing side of it. We have an evolution, uh, and I have to thank, uh, thank, thank um, um, some, some of my colleagues uh, who, who we work very closely at uh, Aegis with this, um, and, I, and I, I pinched part of their design so unashamedly. Um, the evolution of the Class 230 variants, and we've done this very, very pictorially here, so you can see it as a three-car, sorry, it actually started off as a six-car um, D78 EMU. We, we then deliberately created um, a, a two-car um, DC to the EMU. Um, we then introduced a trailer unit as a, as a DC variant, we then focused from a maintenance and longevity perspective and making sure that this product was 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 was, was fit for purpose and reliable for, for the next 30 years by putting AC motors onto there and, and adapting the traction control package to suit. Um, at this point, none of the interiors had really been played about other than the trailer. We then had our first production order 
which was units 230 to 03 to, to 005, which was the West Midlands one. Uh, and and that, that is a DMU, full brand new interior, um, um, uh, utilising all of the technology which we had previously. You, you, you get a theme here. These are building blocks one by one by one, uh, which means you can have any ver any version of this, which, which which is the key element. The next element from the West Midlands units was was the um, um, the prototype units um, um, and the hybrid development units for uh, Wales and Borders. And that eventually gave us a three-car unit, which uh, is our units 230, 006 to 10, uh, which then feeds into the Class 4 rate 4, but also a 25 kV hydrogen um, and, 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 and any other variant which we need thereafter. This technology also clearly is transferable to other rolling stock. It's not unique just to D78. As a package, we have worked with the available um, and technology, innovation, and equipment that we've got to, to package this up into the D78. But to be clear, it's transferable to, 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 to other units with, 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 with the expertise that we have got. Again, the purpose of this slide really is to just to demonstrate the fact that this is not just taken um, a, a unit that was going to be potentially scrapped by London Underground. This, this is taken a unit which which uh, has clearly got a huge amount of life left and, and, and we have turned it into a effectively a brand new modern train um, 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 which, 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 which can cater for um, the um, which can cater for the network and the passenger demands. The next slide, no different, and, and I have to put this into here, no different to any brand new piece of technology and equipment that's gone in. Um, certainly from a, the EMU point of view with West Midlands, um, and we, we, we did have a, um, a very slow start. And, and again, really, this comes back down to um, uh, one of the rationales for our continuous improvement on gensets and, and, and where we've come from, from a Mark 1 to a Mark 2 to a Mark 3 and so on. Um, I, I, it is pleasing now to be able to sit here and, and certainly present to you in, in the fact that um, certainly where we stand at this point in time, um, our moving annual average for the West Midlands units is, 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 is nearing the 15,000 mile mark. And certainly over, over the course of the next coming period, once we're able to restart again, uh, we, we are finally looking able to hit our target, which was 25,000. Uh, and uh, I think the thing really to stress about these lines are as well as they are very low mileage. Uh, but we're only talking two units in, in, in service at any one point in time when they are running. Um, so, 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 so for, for those who can do the math, really, um, uh, the, get, getting to the 25,000 M10 um, uh, in MEA has been challenging, but as I say, we, 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 we are nearing and, and starting to get there now. Um, and, and with all due respect with anybody in the industry, the, the typical bathtub curve has applied. Um, um, and yeah, uh, certainly for the guys uh, who, who are maintaining the units at site, um, the, the, the current levels of reliability and the fact that we've now just hit our fourth period with no cancellations, no lost minutes, um, d d despite what's going on and, and, and despite the low mileage it, it has been quite key. So really, from a point of view of Viva Real, what else, what next? Um, one of the things I haven't touched on, but, but is, is very clearly pertinent to, 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 to our product is fast charging. Um, if you've got a battery train, hybrid train, great. And then obviously, you know, you can either charge that from um, 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 from, from gensets or, or from an external source, whether that's 25 kV. In addition to that, we've introduced fast, fast charge. So, so Viva Rail has, has designed and painted an automatic charging point, uh, which, which is looking to set the UK standard. Um, uh, this allows battery trains to be put anywhere, uh, in essence, with a fast charge system at the end of that um, network or, or, or at conveniently located places to, con to, to ensure that within a 10-minute cycle, we've got a full recharge, uh, which, which meaning, me means that we can um, and utilize either a two-car or a three-car unit or more if you require that and obtain 100 miles in between charges. Uh, and, and, and these 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 typical type of um, uh, um, innovations are key uh, to, to my, my own home backyard, which is uh, Newcastle and Live Ashton. You know, they, they are the type of routes really which, 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 which these units, units would be absolutely ideal for. From a business as well, we've also, uh, as, I, as I've touched on, 25 kV, um, we, we, we do have designs for that. So, so there's no reason why the middle car um, cannot be uh, installed with a, a pantograph. Uh, and and um, um, 
the light notification um, um, utilised to top up the batteries and, and the traction as required, as, as then when not just just, just purely battery driven. Um, so again, the, 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 these are all units which are not pie in the sky. They're sitting there now. That they, they are ready for people from a point of view of innovation, which has been done, tested, uh, and working through approvals. And I suppose finally, um, cause I, I, I've, I've talked a fair bit here, and I, I, I'm surmising my uh, dulcet Geordie tones may be uh, frustrating a, a, a number of you. Um, a lot has been achieved within the last five years, um, and I cannot stress that. Certainly, as a, as a chart of mechanical engineer, uh, it has been exceptionally proud to be able to take um, and with the team uh, in the direction that we've got a unit um, which, which was destined for the scrap pile. Um, to, 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 to then come up with something which, which is clearly going to last for the next 30 years. But, but not only that, it's groundbreaking, provides um, 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 you know, distinct innovation for the country uh, and in terms of where, um, as an industry, really the technology is going to be moving forward um, in the coming years. You know, we've we, we, we built three new trains, we've developed three new trains, they've been certified. Um, three prototypes, three prototypes um, a huge amount of engineering which goes with that, with, with anybody who's in the business uh, and understands that will realise um, as designs uh, in rolling stock, it's ready, it's available to be delivered. And at that point, I would just say thank you very much for listening. And uh, at this point, I will uh, look at questions and uh, try to do my best to answer you accordingly. Thank you, Steve. That was terrific. So now we move on to your opportunity to ask whatever you would like to ask, within reason, of course. Um, we've had some questions come in. So to remind you, if you do would like to ask a question, please feel free to do so. The only dumb question is the one that doesn't get asked. Um, we'll do our best to translate whatever you type in into uh, a question, if we can, especially if we can uh, align that with some other questions that come in. So get typing and get your questions in, and that way we can ask your question. Um, there's been several questions come in from a variety of different sources, so that's always good to see. Usually a good indicator you've hit the mark with what you've been talking about, Steve, so well done. So uh, if we start with um, obviously a lot of interest in the batteries as a comparatively novel traction power energy source for this country. Um, although I know there was a, a train running around in the north of Scotland in the 1950s with the excess hydro powering and recharging the battery. So um, I think we can look into that at some stage. So um, question around batteries to start off with. Um, how have you seen the batteries develop since you first, first started investigating their use? Have they moved on tremendously, not very much, um, in ways you didn't think were, were possible? Um, and another one that, along the similar lines, um, bear with me a moment, uh, what sort of effect does the saloon heating in have in terms of range? Okay. Okay. If, if I start with battery and battery technology first off, um, battery technology has progressed significantly, no different for automotive or, uh, 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 and bus as it has for, for, for real. Um, um, we have two different types of battery uh, banks available. We, 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 we have our um, 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 Viva Rail Scott Living work de 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 design batteries, which we've got fitted to the wheels and borders units. And we, we've also got a hot liquor battery, um, which, which, which is fully TSI approved, uh, with, with, which we are starting to roll out on, on other units. So, so, so the technology in doing so, yes, it, it, it transformed dr drastically from a point of view of chemistry, uh, and space and size, uh, and, and, and the battery management systems that, that therefore support them um, and to, to, to give us the outputs that's needed. So, so, so to answer the first question, yes, it, it has moved on significantly. It continues to do so, um, and, um, and clearly is, is, is here to stay. Um, sorry, Louise, what was the other part of that question? Um, what sort of effect has the saloon heating requirements has on, on range? 
Um, um, the, the sun heating doesn't impact on on on, on range. Certainly, we, we we we've not found that so far because um, certainly with the units that we've got uh, where 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 there are gen sets um, operated, then 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 then, then clearly the, the, the demand is is topped by the gen sets. From from a battery hybrid perspective, very similar. Um, and from a third rail, 25 kV, again, very similar. Um, certainly with the unit which we had, which was purely a two-car battery unit, um, um, the heating, which we, again utilizes the D78 heating that, 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 that's in there, allows us to comfortably maintain 18 to 21 degrees um, um, as required. So, so from a thermal output, we've... Um, the, the, so so far, uh, my understanding is we've not had the issues. If that makes sense. Okay. Nice. Interesting conclusion. Uh, and then a follow-on from from that is, uh, could you develop a little bit further um, how the approvals processes worked, um, and any particular challenges that you had to go through uh, around utilising batteries or such high-power batteries. Okay. Um, the, the, the approvals process has been very um, uh, certainly insightful from my side because um, I, I, I end up delivering that in conjunction with um, um, Andy Hamilton. We've started and really just and this is a part of the flow process chart that I had in the, in the evolution cycle. Um, the base unit 230001 um, um, was was completely assessed uh, via a notified body, um, uh, and, and that provided the base design. Uh, and from a CSM point of view, at every single stage, we, 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 we review the level of work in terms of is it CSM significant or not. In terms of doing so, um, we, we, we work very closely with industry partners, um, whether that's um, EGSD gauge um, or, or, or the certifying bodies, um, from from our point of view of, of working through compatibility. Um, for, for those elements which have been CSM, no different than any other project, um, we, we, we've had to follow a process where a notified body um, or, or, or an ASBO has been involved with that. Um, um, from a certification point of view, clearly, uh, certainly within the UK, this, this, this was the first battery unit which was um, authorised and approved. Um, so, so, so the process for this has been um, um, long. Um, um, we, we've had to demonstrate through. CSM through um, effectively in, in, in old terminology a safety case um, which um, um, enables the batteries to be utilized in their condition for battery uh, uh, sorry for passenger service and um, fr from a process point of view the the, the 230s and the 4 it for um, um, whether that's through uh, original no bore D bore uh, through an as bore or, or then through assessment parties Everything uh, has been uh, again assessed and come back to standards as to whether that's TSIs or NTRs, uh, which then feeds into uh, uh, into the overall compliance matrix, uh, uh, allowing or, or to authorise. Um, <clears throat> would you say that the the process has been, uh, albeit a lot to do? Would you say it had been straightforward, or you had some surprises along the way? Um, <sighs> Straightforward, but by and large, yes. I think certainly from a certainly from a, a battery and technology perspective, um, I, I think the industry is, is helped somewhat now in the fact that um, uh, th th there is more guidelines uh, guidelines available. So, so from a hot of battery perspective, um, um, they, they have been able to be certified um, um, against the uh, TSI quite 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 readily. They, they still do have to go through through um, um, our safety process in the UK, uh, in conjunction with our um, uh, um, ASBO, and then, and then and then feeding that through. So no surprises. Um, um, I think it's as simple as you make it, or as or as difficult as you make it, depending on the decisions that you make, Louise. And mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I think if you if you get a product which which you stick with the right first time. And, and maintain that through, then you, you know life life becomes simpler. Where you start to deviate away from that, and um, as, as technology grows and people want more and different things, that's when it starts getting more complicated. Because simply put, originally that there was no standards to govern it. So we, we we've had to work with industry experts um, um, to, 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 to to deliver a safety case which um, um, proves exactly that, that that these are safe to run on the network.
Jolly good. It's always reassuring to hear that the approvals process is as good as you make it. Yeah. I'd say that is very good. Okay. Um, there's some similar, similar questions here which I'll try and group around about effectively the he heritage of the trains. Yeah. Uh, so one simple question, did you purchase the whole D78 fleet of 226 cars? Um, we didn't buy the entire fleet. Um, LUL's fleet was much larger than that. Um, we, 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 we purchased 226, so, so I think that was approximately uh, just over half, and, and, and that was deliberate. Um, um, certainly that, that, that allowed us to create 75 two or three car train configurations, which is, um, which, which, which is nominal in terms of um, a fleet size. Okay, I think a similar, slightly different question then. Um, if you wanted to, could you build your, theoretically build your train from new, or are there parts from D78s that are only allowed under grandfather rights? Um, uh, interesting. Um, the, 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 the obvious answer to that is yes, you could build these from new uh, if you so desired. Um, um, certainly using um, um, a grandfather right and, and, and shell at times can be a, de a, de a degree restricting, especially for, again for those who are familiar with these units. They've got they're very wide inside uh, and and they're, they're they're very wide at the base as well. So so as a result of that, um, um, the, uh, the certainly colleagues of D-Gage from the point of view of Gage uh, have had to keep us on the straight and narrow permanently with regards to uh, exactly how far we can come out. So, so I, I, if you were starting afresh, clearly the, 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 there are advantages which you would um, um, look to explore and adopt, um, but, but really the technology is transferable to anything else. Uh, uh, but no, you're not, you're not specifically restricted to a D78. Um, we, we, we have maximized what we have um, uh, and, 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 and effectively a piece of rolling stock carriage, which, which yeah, will we'll quite easily give another 30 years. Okay, so uh, similar, uh, but developing that a little bit further, um, do you think you're going to run out of, of D78 stock materials uh, at any time soon? And, and if you do, what will you do afterwards? Um, we, we, we have sufficient capacity um, across our sites um, of, of, of both shells and equipment and, and, and kit to fit. So no, um, 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 certainly it's, it's always a case of first come first serves, um, and, and that, that puts us into a, um, a, a very nice position when, 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 when and if that is the case. So the answer is no. That, that there is clearly more T78 shells which we have, which is usable for various fleet sizes as to whether that's two, three, four car uh, rakes uh, operating up to nine car sets if, if required. Um, um, from from. from Louise, sorry, what was the second part? Uh, what would you do when you do run out of D78 bits? Um, probably no different to any other rolling stock manufacturer or maintainer is, 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 is innovation and uh, apply the technology to um, uh, something different as to whether that's 60 mile an hour, 80 mile an hour, 100 or 125 mile an hour. Um, um, uh, we, we, we have a very um, um, uh, ambitious chairman who, who knows um, what um, he, he wants knows what the marketplace is required, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that would be um, quite adaptable. Jolly good. Um, so that then builds us, takes us on to another next question um, about whether it's possible to increase the maximum speed of the trains at all. Um, with these units, um, they are um, fixed at 60 mile an hour. Um, I think there's very little, very little leeway because of the um, um, one, the, 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 the bogey's wheel sizes and the traction motors, uh, I don't think there's a great deal of leeway beyond that. However, again, from a, from a retraction point of view, um, again, that, 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 that will be permissible. But clearly, that's, that, that, that's further engineering change. And I, I think the answer here to anybody really is it, 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 it depends on what it is you need. Yes, it's doable. Uh, and, and clearly, so long as somebody has got the patience, um, 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 for it to be designed, uh, to, for it to be worked on, and, and for it to be approved. So, in, in short, currently no, but yes, pardon the pun. Okay, okay. 
So fine, Let, let's take us on to uh, some questions coming in on the environmental uh, angle of the trains. Yep. Uh, so at a very, very high level question, um, do you have an idea of um, the carbon that you've either saved by upcycling uh, a train compared with what might have been the, the, the carbon for uh, a new train? Uh, and if you start on that one, I'll find the second half of the question, which I've just misplaced. I'm, I'm going to let the, let let the person down in terms of who's asked the question. That, that's that's the first question where I am stumped tonight. Um, uh, in terms of what that equates to through reutilising re the existing body shell, um, um, underframe, um, bogies, etc. It, it, clearly, it makes up a huge uh, a huge part of, of of the overall. But in terms of quantification against um, carbon output, apologies, I don't know that. That's something I will take away and um, uh, clearly feed back in. Not not a problem at all. Okay. Um, so then, talk, thinking Ben to the operational environment, um, clearly we're in the depths of winter. Uh, well, what passes for the depths of winter in this country uh, these days? Uh, at some stage, we might get a summer again. So, have you got an idea of what um, the operating sort of temperature and, and weather limits are for your? vehicles to, to maintain their reliability uh, and as a follow-on from that where do you think that could could take you in terms of interest from uh, overseas operators yeah um, from, from, from an overall operating extreme um, most of our equipment operates from from minus 18 um, right through up to plus 40 um, uh, I think um, uh, for, for, for all of us who have worked through the depths of winter and certainly the, the bitterly cold winter of 2010, 2011, where it got down to minus 30 to minus 14, and certainly when I was at Gosford there, we 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 did hit minus 16. Um, um, at that point, um, um, uh, if anything, really, it's not the rolling stock which is starting to give up; it's it, 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 it's other angles. So, uh, officially, we 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 have a, a, a very broad range within that. Um, um, from, from, from a point of view of the upper, upper end in, in temperature, we, we, we have developed and we have implemented our own air conditioning system as well, um, which, which is fitted to the um, certainly to the wheels and borders units. Uh, and, and again, that, 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 that is effective from, from, from taking a drop from minus 40, 45 um, uh, within the baking temperature down to um, um, early to mid 20s, okay, to, 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 to maintain a, you know, the, 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 the correct degree of drop. In terms of external um, uh, external interest, um, um, we do have um, um, significant external interest um, from overseas from a point of view of climate, uh, where these trains would equally be adaptable and usable. Yes. Jolly good. Um, Sam, I know you had a couple of questions, uh, well, particularly around um, the heritage, the Isle of Wight. There's, there's one I'd like to pick out, but I know you had one on the um, on the Isle of Wight question, on the Isle of Wight uh, units. I did. I, considering that the the class rate four is now replacing the the old uh, 38 stock, and one of them is has been reported to go into the heritage railway in the Isle of Wight. Is there a possibility of actually fitting your battery technology to that train to enable it to actually run on the heritage line? Um, is there the possibility? I, I suppose, so long as gauging permitted, um, um, I, I would I would expect the answer would be uh, the expect the answer would be yes. Um, I, I think certainly in terms of the person who's raised the inquiry, if, if they want to submit that into Viva Rail, then then clearly that's something which we could uh, pick up and look at, Sam. Um, yeah, thank you. Right, and, and building on that one, Steve, um, do the Isle of Wight units uh, retain the DC traction motors, or have they also got the AC upgrade? You no, know, every, everything migrated to the AC, and, and, and that was a fantastic decision taken. Um, 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 really, post our, our first prototype unit 230001, everything after that everything was um um it, it, it was, was, was traction for ESA motors okay uh, and, and as i say that was completely deliberate it's a brand new motor um and very maintenance friendly um uh, it's a direct replacement from for, for the lt118 um, um for, for, on each powered um axle and um yeah from my perspective as a maintainer brilliant decision here 
Jolly good. Uh, right, so some maintenance questions. I know there'll be some maintenance engineers on the call with us uh, this evening. Um, so could you uh, describe what you think a sort of typical maintenance regime uh, and overhaul regime looks like for, for, for your trains? Yes, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I suppose, firstly, in terms of the background to this, um, um, certainly my my background was um, 20, 21, 22 years um, with, with light rail, uh, certainly at time in Weir, whereby it was a mix. It was fully compliant with group standards, but the, 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 these units were remarkably similar to the D78, so, so I, I was able to draw down from a, a wealth of, of experience built up from there. In addition to that, um, I, I then utilised and, and mapped out the current um, or, or, the, or the last D78 programme to then establish um, a maintenance programme for the 230s. Um, currently, um, I have um, 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 developed four different maintenance plans um, um, supported um, 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 by, by my team in terms of development of the MIs, etc. And typically what this introduces is, is um, your, your standard train preparation, which is clearly 24 hourly. Um, uh, we then introduced a balanced exams right throughout for, for an A, B, C and a D. Um, so, so, so the A exam is, 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 is typically 18,000 miles. Originally, um, when it, with, with, with LT118 DC motors, um, the maintenance regime was, was just under 10,000 miles. And that was specifically because of uh, flash rovers check and brush wear, and that's what we were governed by. As a result of not having that, uh, the, the, the maintenance period, period list has been able to, 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 to be taken right out. Um, so an A-exam is, is, is a survey 18,000 mile. Um, it, it is a balanced exam. Um, so, so for those units with, which has got gen sets on, um, on, a, on an A2, uh, which is at 36,000 miles, we would we then typically pick up oil changes and fuel changes, et cetera. Um, a B-exam anywhere between 68,000 and 72,000 mile. Um, uh, again, the cycles have been developed around these units either doing anywhere between 100,000 miles per year up to 125,000 miles per year, or in the case of um, Isle of Wight and FWR, down to as little as potentially 35 to 45,000 miles per year. Um, so as such, where, where, where mileage is a key factor, I've therefore introduced um, um, uh, minus exams, which, which, which focus on calendar-based maintenance and, and checks rather than equipment changes. Um, on a C exam perspective, um, which is typically your uh, bogey overhaul and wheel turn and et cetera, um, that, 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 that is circa 220,000 miles. Um, and, and then typically a D exam um, is, is, is in terms of broad brush strokes, six to seven years because of the life of these, uh, the, the, the wheel sizes um, um, based upon 110,000 miles a year. And um, from a mileage point of view, that creates to about 800,000 miles. Um, going outside alongside of that, um, clearly we, we, we've then got um, programs for uh, bogies, for axle bearing maintenance, for uh, brush wear, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Jolly good. So um, I think we might, with the number of questions we've got, we're probably going to run out of uh, time to answer them. So we will. Do our best to get through those and, and address those that we can't do so tonight. Um, to do, so, question I think there's a couple of questions on the traction power uh, again. Um, you go to the 10 minute charging time for the fast charge unit. Uh, is that essentially a charge from, from empty or a uh, partially charged state? Uh, and if it was would it be quicker for a partially charged state? Yes, it would be quicker for a partially charged state. Um, um, and um, but but, but uh, the, 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 the ten minutes is effectively taking it from 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 base to a full charge. And um, again, if if there is any parties actually interested with this, um, you know, if they, if they want to come through and contact Viva Rail, we 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 we, we can clearly depending on the circumstances, sure, the fast charging systems that, that, that we've developed have built available at Long Marston to, 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 to actually view, uh, which, which, which shows how the systems work, Louise. Okay, that would be grand. I'm sure somebody will take you up on that offer. Um, and on the similar question around the batteries, um, what do you use to keep them cool? Is it forced air or, or liquid cooled? 
It's twofold. The, uh, the the batteries which we utilize on wheels and borders is forced air, and and our our brand new um, um, hot liquid batteries, um, they they are uh, they, they are liquid cooled. Okay, so um, we, we we have both technologies, but cer certainly the ones which we utilize for wheels and borders, it's just uh, naturally vented. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and then a couple of last questions, I think, on the diesel gen sets, which clearly are interesting for um, uh, certain applications. So, do you think, uh, do you see them as a, a long term product? Um, and could you advise on the really force arrangement? Just repeat the last end of that, Louise, sorry. Can you uh, elaborate a little on the exhaust arrangement for the diesel gen sets? Oh, right, okay. So, 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 so in terms of gen sets, I suppose like anything, that, that, that there, there is a marketplace for, for, for any product depending on the circumstance or, or the position. So, so from a gen set perspective, it, it, it is um, exceptionally useful from a, a hybrid development whereby um, um, either fast charge is not implemented or, or, or there is no third rail or overhead. And then clearly that means you can operate a battery train uh, and top up with it clearly with a gen set. Um, so in terms of hybrid development, no different to automotive. That 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 is probably where it will go. Um, and 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 from a um, from a longevity, it would be a, it would be around as long as the customer wants it and, and, and needs it to be. Um, from an exhaust perspective, um, um, yeah, this is quite an intriguing one because it, it, certainly in the early days. We we, 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 we we had hoped to um, um, simply just exhaust the truck and um, that, 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 that turned out not to be feasible. Um, the, the exhaust system um, um, that's fitted, the genset gets fitted into place and then that there is an exhaust adapter um, which comes out of the side of the genset, um, um, runs along the length of the um, um, unit which is just under the sole bar. Um, up to the ends of the vehicle and up to roof level, uh, no different to uh, other um, DMUs. Right, uh, and I think I'll put this as the, as the last question, Stephen, and I think I have to draw it to a close. Um, one of the things I'm particularly aware of uh, as, a, as a former engineering director in a TOC, um, trying to do upgrades and solve problems is a huge challenge in an operational environment. You've had the, the, the luxury uh, up until recently of not having to run a railway at the same time as trying to do your product development. Um, how have you, um, what sort of approach have you taken to sort of pulling in your support teams and the distribution of teams across the, the country in those different locations ensuring they work together well and, and um uh, and have you any particular examples that uh, you could cite as, as sort of really good good practice for, for people to learn from? Um, I think I think the core element about where where we've started from is 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 we we we, we have had um, a, a common growth in terms of a strong direction with with with, with what our product is to be and, and the market we're, we're, what we're aiming to satisfy. Um, that in itself. To a degree, has been eased by the fact that that uh, that everybody who's been delivering that has been a rolling stock professional and and, and has got significant background right across manufacture, um, design, production, approvals, right through the maintenance and and and, and looking after the life of these. Um, so so so, so the, the the team has deliberately been made up of of of, of individuals who have got um, a significant wealth of experience, which can um, then re realistically deliver. To, 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 to deliver a product um, which they themselves would 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 be able to run in a depot uh, in a depot environment um, operationally day to day basis etc. Um, the, the 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 strategy in terms of um, 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 uh, arranging that is is that we do have a core central design function team. Um, uh, again, that 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 that, that is, is is led up by um, uh, certainly a counter, um, my, my counterpart on the uh, manufacturing side, uh, a chief engineer for production, um, and that 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 role specifically looks at brand new designs and variants and the customers' wishes and aspirations. Um, uh, that that team then effectively um, within there draws up all of the electrical criteria, um, all of the designs, um, both mechanical, interior. Electrical, etc. That information is then the source of hub, which is disseminated across the experienced parties, 
whether in product support, whether in um, um, design, um, um, whether in maintenance. And 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 I, I think the core thing about the businesses is, um, in a good way, we are very top heavy with engineers. So, 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 so some could always say that that's never a good thing because you know there's, there's too many people with fingers in pies. Uh, but but from 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 our angle, uh, it, it it allows us to give a product which is going to be sensible at the right price, um, 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 uh, and 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 usually within the right time scales. Um, the 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 the, the onus as well by utilising the product support in the way that we've got is everybody um, um, feels as if they're a part of it. And, and, and are a part of it. So, so, so whether that's the guys in Sane who would clearly, um, um, you know, f f f from their angle, build gensets, build batteries, you know, build wiring looms, which are um, uh, can, can be taken either for local lines uh, or for new trains. Um, um, you, you know, they, 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 have, they have a distinct involvement with it. Um, the, the depots from a maintenance angle, um, you know, they too get to see what, what, what the various sites is, whether it's long marsting and testing whether it's um, um, same from the point of view of development and, and, and product support and overhaul. Um, um, so, 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 you know, it sounds a bit corny, Louise. It just, it just works. You, you, you've got a group of individuals who, who try hard, who, who um, um, you know, who, who, it's, it's blood, sweat and tears for, um, for, for, for all of the guys who, who are just extremely passionate about what they do and how they do it. And, um, um, and and I think the, the, the upshot of it is, is it, it, it is a team of experienced people who then are able to bring in and draw no different to what we've got. We bring in a lot of youngsters as well, and uh, I say that gladly because I'm in my forties now. But we, we we bring in a lot of youngsters and develop them, which 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 will be the next generation. And and, and those two, in terms of the people who we've brought in, are equally just as passionate in terms of what 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 we do. Um, you know, it, it, it's arguable whether our, our 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 sort of outfit and you know and, and setup would work with a, a much larger, a larger organisation. Possibly not, because at, at that point you, you've got engineers who are quite often uh, bounded and, and, and have constraints um, um, as a result of internal processes. At the end of the day, we do produce something which is completely safe uh, and completely authorised, and uh, you know, but 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 uh, uh, there are no boundaries in terms of what we've got, and everybody is approachable. Lockdown. Sorry, that, that's a bit of a textbook answer, but that, that, that is literally the way it is. I don't think it's a textbook answer at all. Um, I think you could summarise that by saying the people make all the difference. Yes, yes, absolutely, yes. Good. Right, I think we'll draw a clo close to the questions there then. Uh, and it falls to me to do the vote of thanks. One moment and also to remind people of our next event. Um, if you would like to come to our next event, um, please visit our Ticket Source booking office, uh, and this means we can get you up-to-date information and post you the links and so on for, um, for the events themselves with the least effort on our behalf, which is greatly appreciated. So that's the 11th of February at 18.30 and please do come along. The young engineers do learn and grow from it quite a lot. So, my turn to do the vote of thanks. Um, and I'm reminded of a quote from one of the customers, or many of the customers, in fact, of the time of the Weir Metro, after the refurbished Metro cars started coming back from, from Doncaster following refurbishment in the period of around about 2013 to, to 2015. Aren't these new trains nice? Uh, which is a compliment to everybody involved. Take uh, an old, a car which has had a, a long lifetime, do some good engineering, some good work on the interior and the exterior to the point where the majority of passengers will be completely fooled uh, and believe them to be new trains. So well done on that score. Um, I think there's a number of, of things I would point to um, by way of um, good application of good engineering, but also um, you had some good good fortune with some aspects with the relatively young bogies, the lack of uh, corrosion and, and body cell longevity. You've then coupled that with some good thinking to retain what works well to progressively improve the capability of the trains, 
to ensure familiarity for mainline operation, to take the good decision to upgrade the traction motors despite their apparently good condition, to, give it, to go to low maintenance AC motors and, and better traction control, uh, and to maximize the availability through design. You clearly got a road map or route map, I should say, to through your development and deployment process, which has suited you well and supported all of those things I've just mentioned. You've been balancing the in-house and expert inter external expertise, but also using some proven technology and some innovation. Above all, focusing on what's good for the client, which I think you could summarize as good engineering. So my personal congratulations to yourself, Steve, and to everybody involved uh, in Viva Rail in, in achieving what you have so far. Uh, I hope you continue to go on achieving and being able to deploy your trains for, for more operators in the future. My personal thanks to you uh, for talking to us quite so openly and, and freely this evening and for, for giving your time uh, so freely as well. I want to know it's been a busy time for you getting trains down to, to the Isle of Wight uh, and getting the Bedford Bletchley trains doing what you want them to. Um, and above all else, doing all of this, uh, given the restrictions that we've all been dealing with uh, in a, under a pandemic. So that to me is a phenomenal achievement. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being quite so candid and, and helpful with, you, with answering the questions as well. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you again at some stage in the future. I imagine um, when you've got uh, perhaps a full bigger battery operation uh, in, in full swing and you're thinking about where to go next with, uh, with your ideas on, on the D78s. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I'm afraid we can't give you the vote of thanks in, in the normal way with, with applause, but uh, please take it from me. There's, there's plenty of applause going on in the background. Thank you, Louise, and, and really, that's that's on behalf of myself um, and and the dedicated team at Viva Rail, and uh, that, that, that's wholeheartedly appreciated. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. So, to you yourselves, the audience members, thank you very much for submitting all of your questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to them all. Uh, those that we haven't yet answered, uh, we have a note of what they are, uh, and we'll do our best to get those posted. Uh, by some means, um, we'll work out how to do that. The recording of this webinar will be available on the iMechies webinar hub uh, in due course. Give us a few days to get that done. Um, and in the meantime, if there's any further queries, uh, please use the contact information that's on the Near You page. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you on the 11th of February uh, and a quick plug again, please book your tickets for the virtual annual, annual luncheon uh, in early March. And we'll look forward to seeing you all safe and healthy in, in February. <laughs>